Of all the mysteries of the church, miracles are perhaps the most bewildering and controversial. One such miracle involving the Eucharist took place over 1,300 years ago in the town of Lanciano, Italy. In the tiny church of St. Lagosian are relics revered by Christian pilgrims who flock to this site from around the world, for it is claimed that the reliquary contains the actual flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. But where the Bible states that Jesus ascended into heaven, leaving no earthly remains, how could this be? The story begins with an 8th century Basilian monk. He was used to celebrating Mass in the eastern rite of the church, and they uh, used leavened bread, bread that was more substantial, okay, than what we were using at the time and what we use today, unleavened bread. And he had doubts. And what he felt is that the unleavened bread, uh, he felt that the unleavened bread would be invalid matter for the Eucharist. Remember, in order to celebrate the Eucharist, you need proper matter and proper form. Matter is the stuff of which we consecrate. The form are the words in which we use. So at every Mass, we have to use proper matter and proper form. One morning at Mass, as he began the consecration, it is alleged that an astonishing event took place, an event that would be known as the Eucharistic miracle of Lanciano. As he held the consecrated Eucharist with his back to the crowd, the monk's hand and body began to shake uncontrollably, similar to someone experiencing divine ecstasy. After some time, he turned to them, revealing what had happened. What appeared to have started out as bread and wine had literally turned into flesh and blood. Needless to say, such a miracle would have restored the monk's faith. The priest, when celebrating the Mass, obviously was shocked, frightened, confused, and they say that at that moment, his faith was restored. His doubt in the real presence, in the mystery, and the belief of transubstantiate was restored, and he almost went into a kind of divine ecstasy. And later, he turned, faced his congregation, and said to them, Behold the flesh and blood of our most beloved Christ. The mystery itself reminds us of the reality, the utter reality of transubstantiation. It's our Lord's body. It's our Lord's blood. The story, as it's told, reaffirmed for the priest at that moment his own faith in our Lord's body and blood in the Eucharist. And that helped reaffirm it in the people for whom he was celebrating the Eucharist. And I'm sure for that whole town and that entire local church. So that's a very important thing in that sense that it's a reaffirmation, almost a physical representation of what we believe to be true during the consecration of the Mass. The Eucharist is, uh, is something that transcends time and space and yet allows people to connect on a very deep level with their God. Um, and it it unites people um, in a kind of sociological way or a physical way, um, a population that one might never have heard of if they are confecting Eucharist in the same manner and validly and licitly as um, a group in which you yourself participate in, you are connected to them. Um, Eucharist provides the opportunity for Catholics to come together as a universal church. Every Eucharist, the source and summit of life in the church, that's what we do. That's the mystery of the faith. And it's passed on and shared every single time we gather to celebrate Mass. For many, believing in such miracles as what is claimed to have taken place in Lanciano brings solace to their faith. For others, faith only needs to be confirmed by partaking in the Holy Eucharist, celebrating the presence of the Lord in their lives, which is a miracle in its own right. 
I'm your host, Carolyn Morrison, and thank you for watching Mysteries of the Church.